Joel Schumacher, uh, the director, actually uh, just recently passed away. He was 80 years old. This is from Variety. It says Joel Schumacher, director of Batman films and Lost Boys, dies at 80. This is by uh, Carmel Dagan. And it says Joel Schumacher, costume designer, turned director of films, including St. Elmo's Fire, The Lost Boys, and Falling Down, as well as two Batman films, died in New York City on Monday morning after a long battle with cancer. He was 80. Schumacher brought his fashion background to directing a run of stylish films throughout the 1980s and 1990s that were not always critically acclaimed, but continue to be well-loved by audiences for capturing the feel of the era. Schumacher was handed the reins of the Batman franchise when Tim Burton exited Warner Brothers. Cape Crusader series after two enormously successful films. The first movie by Schumacher, Batman Forever, starring Val Kilmer, Tommy Lee Jones, Jim Carrey, and Nicole Kidman, grossed more than $300 million worldwide. Um, and before we get into them talking about Batman and Robin, which is often confused in my mind anyway with Batman Forever, I just wanted to just take a, a moment and talk about... Uh, Joe Schumacher's films. Um, I've enjoyed pretty much almost all the movies that he's made. Um, and um, there are several of his films that he's made that I quite adore. Uh, one of them is actually one of my favorite films. I've talked about, uh, well, not just on this show, but on other shows about how much I love Batman Forever. Um, I know it's considered a divisive film among certain fans, but I felt like that Batman Forever um, did a really great job of um, bringing some new elements to Batman and attempting to do them in live action and attempting, you know, not always being terribly successful at times, but at least attempting to bring in a lot of elements that a lot of other directors have been uh, scared to even try to touch. Um, because, you know, how do you introduce Robin? And how do you make that work? And I felt like Batman Forever, the first film, uh, was quite good and I really enjoyed it back in the day. Um, but he's worked on so many films, um, and we just want to take a moment to acknowledge his passing. I actually shared on my Facebook page, some of you are friends with me on Facebook or follow me on Facebook, actually, actually saw it. Uh, Seal actually had an interesting little tribute and acknowledgement that he put out for Joel Schumacher on his passing. So if you're curious to see that, if you didn't see it, you can find that actually in my feed on my Facebook page, my personal Facebook page. Um, but uh, yeah, Joe, Joe Schumacher has left us. And I, in my opinion, anyway, I think he's left an interesting um, film legacy. Um, tell me, Erica, do you have any particular films with Joel Schumacher that you quite enjoy? I do like Batman Forever, actually. And uh, I don't really, I don't know. I don't know if I consider it uh, that controversial. Obviously, Batman and Robin is. Batman and Robin um, is sort of almost universally panned. Uh, but I but I enjoyed Batman Forever. I liked Val Kilmer uh, in the role of Batman. I thought he did a, a very good job. And at the time, I you know I thought Nicole Kidman was just like the greatest thing ever. I mean, she's gorgeous. But um, yeah, I mean, he, I'm kind of it's interesting. You know, this article because I have this article up as well. You know, I didn't realize that he actually got his start as a costume designer, uh, and that's really interesting to me. I didn't know that. Um, and it kind of shows in films like that and films like, you know, Batman Forever and um, uh, also Batman and Robin. Uh, you, you can kind of see that, that his flair for, for, for costuming, you know, because uh, whatever else you say about those movies, some of the costumes are really cool. They're really excellent. I, I actually like uh, one thing I do like about Batman and Robin quite a bit is Uma Thurman is Poison Ivy. I thought that, uh, you know, if, if she had been given a little bit more to work with, it would have been, you know, even better than she was. And I thought, because I thought she was really good as, as Poison Ivy. That's one That's one highlight of Batman and Robin for me. In fact, I used to have a poster of her as Poison Ivy in my room, <laughs> you know, uh, because I was so kind of enamored with her portrayal of the character. But I didn't realize that. I mean, did you know that, Dave, before you read the article that he started out as a costume designer? No, I, I didn't. I, I know that, I knew that he had a legacy in film that extended beyond film directing and he had done other things. But I, I didn't realize that. And one of the things I will say about almost all of Joel Schumacher's films is that he brings a very operatic sense to most of the productions. When you look at the way things are staged, when you look at the use of music and light and costuming, it, it's very, uh, very, it has a sense of drama about it that reminds me of opera. Um, and that's one of the things I actually quite like about his films. I, it, it makes them distinct and, and unique. Um, and the way that he's able to take that and apply it 
to so many different kinds of you know genres you know i mean batman forever and lost boys you'd think because of the bat connection they'd have more in common but they could have <laughs> less in common beyond the combo connection and obviously bats you know but um it's interesting it's very interesting he has a really unique uh, film legacy um and so i thought it would be it would be fitting for us to take a moment and acknowledge his passing um and the uh, one that i always i always forgot about and didn't realize until or it didn't come back to me i think i knew it at the time when it was coming out but it's been such a long time it's falling down i didn't realize yeah. that he was a director for falling down and i remember that film that film was very controversial actually when it came out and it's going to be probably even more controversial today it's it's going to be controversial forever so it's going to have a sort of historical significance in that regard, I think. And that's, like right. you said, I mean, that's a very different kind of film in yes. tone and everything in terms of his other work. And, uh, you know, and then another one that stuck out to me that a, a lot of people probably never even saw was 8 Millimeter. You ever, are you familiar with that one? I saw I saw 8 Millimeter. Um, so did I. I saw and, it in the theater. And I thought it was, yeah, I did too. I, I thought it was an interesting film. Um it, and it's, it also, in a lot of ways, a lot of ways, it feels almost like an experimental film. It's it's very yeah. stylistic. It's 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 really kind of a crazy film. I remember kind of almost feeling, um, and this this sounds like a weird compliment, but I almost felt kind of sick after leaving. And I think that was what it was meant to do. I think it was meant to make you kind of feel sick as you left the movie theater. You know. Well, and in addition to that, I would say he also has some interesting films in his film legacy too that harken to a particular era. You know, when you talk about St. Elmo's Fire, I mean, that captures kind of the 80s in a very genuine sense because it was shot in the 80s. But mm -hmm. then you turn around and you look at a film like Flatliners and, you know, Flatliners being made in the 90s. In a lot of ways, it 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 captures that flavor of that era, too. You know, so it's very interesting just all the different films he did. Well, and how diverse Falling Down does, too. Falling Down, yeah, I think, yeah, captures exactly. that era. Yeah. You know, my father actually was an unemployed engineer you know what i mean for for a large part of that era so you know i totally kind of understood where, where that was coming from that you're not being economically viable I, i'll never forget that and it's also interesting that you, it, it, uh, people probably forget but the person who says that is actually a black man who's standing outside of the bank he's he says that that famous line that i am not economically viable and then michael douglas has a sort of connection because they're both you can both tell they're kind of in the same place you know what i mean so right. today, who knows if you could even get away with that? But that's that's an interesting part of the movie. Right. Interesting. Very cool. Very cool. So yeah, we just wanted to take just a moment and, and talk about Joel Schumacher's passing here at the top of the show. Um, but like I said, a very interesting film legacy. I think a lot of people, if you would go to his IMDb and actually peruse all the different films that he worked on, I think you might be surprised. Um, a lot of people think of him for specific films but there's a lot of other films he worked on. I don't think people are quite aware of. So I think they'd be a little That was surprised. the case for me. That's yeah, the case yeah. for me when I read this article, for sure. 